can you uh, unmute the blue mic? Okay, we're going to go ahead and let's get started. Let's stand at first Jerusalem, open up. Women cover their heads, men uncover their heads. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' holy name we pray. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading will come from Proverbs chapter 22, verses 17 through 21. Bow down thine ear, and hear the words of the wise, and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee. They shall withal be fitted in thy lips, that thy trust may be in the Lord. I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. Have not I written, uh, have not I written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge, that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth? that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that sin unto thee. Again, today's scripture reading came from Proverbs chapter 22, verses 17 through 21. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I guess we have a few selections with the children's choir and the adult choir.
my my set.
Praise the Lord.
fantastic. Give the choir another round of applause. A blessing. They won up last week. You know, when you go to them, them Sunday churches, they, I'll be up here. I, I come up here after that song, I sit back down. They start singing again. <laughs> Have about another 10 more songs and give you about two minutes of work. But we know what we came here for. We're going to have some church in here, and it ain't going to be just about singing either. Praise the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everybody in the name of Jesus. Peace to everybody on the phone line and social media. I ain't even going to name it all because it's all over the place. And Facebook and YouTube, and we got it online too. Title of today's lesson, you should have a handout, is why I believe in the Bible. And that's a simple, simple question, but the average Christian would, probably wouldn't be able to answer that because, you know, they dealing and rooted into tradition and don't understand a whole lot. That's why people would say, well, I don't know what to believe and I don't know, you know, who created what and how am I supposed to believe and why should I believe? But the Lord tell you, he show you, you know, he, he happy with you. You can prove it. And when we get through this lesson, we're going to see why we believe. Because a lot of times people just believe because that's what their parents taught them. You know, I was talking to my mom. She said that before. I just go to church because that's what we did. But that could be further than what you want to do because you want to make sure you have some understanding. And they didn't water the word down completely to the point where nobody actually read the book as a whole. They don't actually get on there, read it, don't know what's in it, and they just go off a of tradition. <laughs> Their whole life, they've been taught off tradition and a bunch of catchphrases and quotes and not really understanding what this Bible in, in detail. Because, you know, people say, like I said, you know, you got a lot of different religions in the world, a lot of different stuff. But all those other religions that they have out there and, you know, hey, you might get offended, but that, that, that's a bunch of garbage. You know, and people kill over religion because true in their heart, they really believe and sincere about what they was taught. And, you know, you got some religions, hey, that you would die for it. And that's, you know, that's in the, that's in the book, too. But you got to make sure you're dealing with the true and, real, and the truth and what's actually written in here. Even the, when you read through the Old Testament and you read through the New Testament, you'll come to find out that all the religious leaders, they all thought they had it. They were really sincere about having it. But most of them throughout the book, you wouldn't believe that. Most of them throughout this book, they didn't have it. They didn't, under, they didn't get it. That's the whole reason why. We in the predicament we're in right now because we think we got it. But people deal with their religion from, you know, what they seem to think is true. But this book here, what separates this from all, we're going to find out that this book tells you about the past, the future, and let you give you a lot of signs. And I ain't talking about some signs like people throw like Notre Dame, they just throw any windows out there. No, I'm talking about concrete facts that will prove that this is the book of God. That's why we believe. That's why the people in the truth here believe in the book. We believe in the book because it's, we got proof. And when we get through this lesson, Lord willing, we're going to show you some proof. Not just talking, you know, because we, we deal with stuff. You know, we deal with this book, but everything tied back into it. But we use some history. We use some artifacts. Today we're going to look up some definitions. We're going to look up, we're going we gonna to go into the psychopedia and look up stuff and show you that Hey, this thing is real. It's true. And none of those other religious can, you know, beliefs that people got out there, doctrines they got out there, they don't do you. They don't do that. They don't tell you 2,000 years in the future, I mean 2,000 years in the past, what's going to happen in the future. They, they don't give you any of that. They don't show you what's going to happen tomorrow. They just give you some what some people would say, uh, just a good book to read. But all books ain't good. So the title again is Why I Believe in the Bible. 
And we're going to go ahead and get into this book because it's very important that we understand this and know that so that when you, someone asks you that question, you're able to show them why you actually believe in the Bible. Let's pick it up at First Thessalonians, I mean Second Thessalonians, chapter two. Second Thessalonians, chapter two. Go ahead, pick it up at verse one. Go ahead, brother. Now we beseech you, brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not, not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. See right here, right here we talking about future stuff, past where we at. Because a lot of people want to know that this is beyond us. He tell, he's telling you here in verse 2, he said, he said that ye be not soon shaken in mind or in trouble. Yeah, because right now we're in some troublous times. And it's rough out here. Neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter from us as that day of Christ is at hand. So you got a lot of people who don't believe in Christ. Trust me, you're going you gonna to be in trouble. He said, let no man, he said, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shouldn't come except the fall away come first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So we need to know who that is, who we're talking about. But that's no, no only if you read Matthew 24, it's the abomination of desolation. And you read Daniel, he, it should explain you that and it's tell you about the history of that. But go ahead. Who opposeth and exalted himself above, above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he is as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. See, this is going to come to pass. This, this is going into why we believe what we believe, but go ahead. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. See, what other God out here is, is telling you stuff like this? What other book out here is telling you things like this? Who, what, what other book showing you stuff like, I'm telling you this, you need to remember this. This is going to come to pass. So when it come to pass, you prepare for it and you see it. What other religions do that? Because, see, if this wasn't the true book of God, you wouldn't be able to do nothing like that. Right. And it wouldn't come to pass. He's showing you that. You got evidence. If you was to really get down to some scholars that dig into this book, they come to find out, dude, you know, this book is, we all know it's recorded thousands of years ago. It ain't, it ain't slipped up. Trust me. If it slipped up, they would have had it on the front news. And been told you over a thousand years, like, oh, this book is bogus. You ain't seen it, ain't heard it. You say you don't believe and you don't, you don't think that's right, but you ain't found nothing against it. You ain't heard nothing against it. It's been, it's been thousands of years. Well, you waiting on some old thousands? Wake up. Go ahead, brother. Six. And now you know what withholding, withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. That's right, because everything is in his time. Go ahead, brother. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. We're not going to get into this, but this just goes to show you. He's going he's gonna to have a, be, be a Lord going to give him some power because people want to believe in miracles. This is the whole purpose of that. Because you don't want to read this book and, and believe what's actually written in here. He's going he gonna to give him a strong delusion. He gonna, this, this man of sin is going to be able to have some witchcraft going on. And most of the people who say, hey, show me a sign, because that's how people all is right now. I want to see somebody walk on water, then I'll believe you. Right. Yeah, okay. We're going to show you what to believe in. He's going to show you, and, and trust me, if you start to think like that, hey, you're going to be in trouble. But go ahead. What verse you at? Ten. Go ahead. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. You see that? It's deceivableness, right? He's going to deceive you. Why? Because you looking for something like that. See, Lord, the Lord is such a great God. 
to the point where if you don't want to do right, you want to be evil, he lets you have that. That's this guy here. The other Jesus, nah. He love you no matter what. But this one here, he, can, he makes sure that if you, if you covet after that, he's going to give you that. Because it ain't going to be said that, you know, in judgment day, well, I wanted to be wicked, but you wouldn't let me. No. No. It's going to be like, hey, that's what you want to do? You're going to be the best at it. The more you want it, the more you're going to get it. And see, that's how the Lord operates. Because, hey, the people who want blessing will say, hey, Lord, keep blessing me, right? But on the other end, you, hey, you get to keep getting cursed. And if you don't take heed to that, the Lord will make sure that you love it. Because that's what you love. So if you decide to go that way, hey, he lets you keep running. Keep on running. Do you. Go ahead. Because they receive not the love of the truth, and they might, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. See what I'm saying? He make it well. Hey, if you decide and you don't want it, he said, hey, I'm, I'm going to make you believe in a lie. So you wonder why all these people, when you talk about all this homosexuality going on, why they think it's so right. That's why. Because they decided they wanted to go that way. He said, I'm going to let you run. They beat, they beat down your back door. You look like you're saying something wrong. I think that Black Panther movie, they was mad about that. Like, oh, man, they ain't had no, ain't had no homosexual stuff going on in there. That's crazy. But that's how strong the delusion is. It ain't had really too much sex scenes in it at all. But they was like, it ain't in there because it was a big, gross movie because they trying to pollute your mind. So that is, but they, they mind is gone. They got a strong delusion. So they're trying to implement that in everything. They already got it in the cartoons. That's the way of life, but their mind is gone. Why? Because God gave them a strong delusion. So they believe that it to their heart. That, hey, it's right. I was born like this. You in trouble? Come on, finish that, brother. 12. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. See, once you decide you want to go that way, this is the God we deal with. And he ain't to be played with. He going to deal with you. And he going to make sure that whatever you do that was crooked, you going to love. You wonder why people be walking around, you see people outside, like, man, what's wrong with them? They lost their mind. You never know what happened. You start to want to love that, it start to consume you, and it's, hey, the Lord just say, hey, run with it. I didn't already tried to talk to you. I didn't had enough. Dude, we perfect example of that. You don't want to listen, boy. You get a beating. Take a big beating. I was talking to my son earlier today. He was like, my youngest, he was like, yeah, yeah, dad, I remember about that. I was like, yeah. You see the slave where they just beat the skin off his back? That's for our forefathers transgressing. But, hey, we wouldn't have did nothing but the same thing. Look at us now. You deserve it. You had the word. word you didn't listen, so the whole world is jacked up because of us. We got to get it right, man. Let's move forward. Second Peter. And the getting it right point part is making sure that you dealing with the book itself. Read the book. That's, that's just, I mean, it's really simple when you think about it. That's what we're supposed to do is read the book. But you go into these, these Sunday church, they, they ain't even come with no Bible. You know what happens when you go to class and you don't have a book? You get an F's. So you're going to get a flag on your life. Your whole existence, your whole soul is on the line. And you come unprepared. But then again, they ain't reading nothing in there anyway, so that's why. If you're going to be dead, hey, that makes sense. Why even bring the book if I'm going to be dead? Second Peter, chapter 1. Pick it up at verse 19. Second Peter, chapter 1, and 19. Go ahead, Hebrew. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. So he, got, he said we got a more sure word. This is something he's telling you what he had, but go ahead. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, 
as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn, and the day star rise in your hearts. Okay, so he said we have a sure, more sure word of prophecy. He's going to tell in verse 20. Go ahead. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So you have a lot of people out here. They're talking about you believe it the way you want to believe it. I believe it the way I believe it, and we're going to be all good, right? That's what they say, right? Dude, this ain't, this ain't nothing private. You know, they think that they, and you know, and like I, you know, I, I kind of know how that spirit go because, you know, sometimes you, you know, the Lord bless you and you think, hey, I just, I got this personal relationship with God and we going to be like that. No, it's, it's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one way we must go. Right. But the Lord also, he said he ran, he ran, well, I tell people all the time when they come with that, they say, you know, he ran on the wicked, he up the wicked too. Sunshine on him too. So don't think you got some, per, you know, personal. Hey, you want to see a personal relationship? Go, go back and read, you know, through Exodus and and, and Leviticus and Deuteronomy. You you see Moses was in there. See what type of personal relationship he had. He was face to face with God, and God was gonna kill him because he didn't circumcise his kid. He didn't follow the law. So you talk about having something personal. So hey. Read that verse again, 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So when you're reading this and people don't want to listen and take heed with that, hey, it is what it is. You dust the you know, feet off, hey, I'm at it. It ain't private. If you don't want it, then fine. You do you. Let's move further. A 21, go ahead. For well, the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, See, by the Holy Ghost. Exactly. So this is the spirit that, that the Lord put on them. And this is more evidence here within itself because you can find out that from all these thousands of years later, all this book is one. Now, that's almost impossible. These different books, that's impossible to go from thousands of years. You know, you can't even remember what you did yesterday. But to go thousands of years and all this stuff lines up, and you ain't found the hole in it yet? Come on, people. Come on. But it said right here in 21, it said, For the prophecy came not in the old, but in the will of man by holy men that spake by God. They was moved by the Holy Ghost. So, that, so that's an angel, but that's another lesson. But, hey, he was giving them words to speak. They were writing it down. That's how you know it's perfect. Man couldn't do it. Because the people say that. Say, man, how you going to believe that book, brother? Man wrote that book, brother. And man, if man tried to write this book, he'd be all messed up. A thousand years later. He'd he been dead 20 times. And you're talking about some man wrote that book. Man, you a fool. You ain't even thinking. You got to open your mind to understand how thousands of years go by and these people all go on the court. Right, right. We're going to show you, man. Let's go into this, man. Let's do this, man. Let's go to Isaiah 53, man. They don't hear me. Isaiah 53. And pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead, brother. Who have believed our report? Okay, this is what he said. Who, who have? This is Isaiah. And, and, and this is prophecy. And this is verse 21 that we just read, 2 Peter. Go ahead. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry, out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor, nor comeliness. And when he shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Go ahead. He is despised and rejected of men. Now we're going to start to get who we're talking about here, right? But this is Isaiah, but we all understand what happened. He was moved by the prophecy of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, right? right. So... He's going through it, and we, and we know this is Jesus, but hey, we're going to read some. Go ahead. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Mm -hmm. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. See, we know that, right? We know who we're talking about here, right? But Isaiah wrote this. This is thousands of years before Christ even came. This is, this is the stuff I'm trying to show you. And who in their right mind will want to go through what Christ said just to say, yeah, see, it ain't right. Ain't nobody going to go through that. 
Who gonna, who gonna take on the task of that? Only but the Holy One. Go ahead, brother. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted. So they say, hey, we always say hey, we're under the blood of Jesus, right? So that's our iniquity, but go ahead. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, and what happened? Yet he opened not his mouth. We already know who this is. Go ahead, brother. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. We know he's the lamb of God, right? right? That's what we say, right? Go ahead, brother. So we know who we're dealing with. Go ahead. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut, up, cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Go ahead, brother. And he made his grave with the wicked. We already know that, right? He died on the cross, right, with two thieves, right? Go ahead. So he said he made his grave with the wicked. Go ahead. And with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit found in his mouth. So we know this ain't nobody but Jesus. Trust me. Because trust me, we, we, got, we, have some, we, we got plenty of deceit in our mouth. <laughs> but go ahead. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. So now we see, hey, that's what that prophecy was. And it ain't private because, hey, that spirit is what he was given, and that's what Isaiah spoke on. So let's let you know. And that was Jesus, which was thousand years. So this is why we believe in this stuff. Not no fairy tales. Not none of that. We believe because... We, it's re document history here to tell you this was wrote way before that. And we all believe that. Here it is for you, showing you right here. Go look it up. Let's move forward. Let's go to Mark chapter 8. We got a full house today, full stuff going on today. Mark chapter 8. Pick it up at verse 31. 8 and 31. Go ahead, brother. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things. So that's what we was reading, right? But here it is, Jesus right here. He's talking. He's about to teach them. He said he, say he began to teach them, and the Son of Man shall suffer many things. And what? And be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes. And be killed, and after three days rise again. So he's letting you know, hey, this is, he was te teaching them this. This is what's going on. But go ahead. And he spake this saying openly. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. So, so Peter rebuked him. Because obviously he, when he didn't want him to die, right? And he was with him for three and a half years. He said, nah, look, yeah, I don't want this to happen. But what? But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter saying. What did he tell Peter? Get thee behind me, Satan. There ain't no time to get in your feelings. Mainly when you're dealing with the truth. You know? Because we talk to one another like that. We're about ready to box. I'm like, well, we cool. You call him the devil, brother. But if, hey, but if the shoe fit, we already know, right? Put it on. But that's some humility within itself. It's showing you, hey, it is what it is. But go ahead. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. See, that's where your mind's supposed to be at in everything you do. You focusing on, hey, this is about God. That's the mindset you want to have. Because, hey, we have things we want in life, but, hey, that should be secondary. Because it's temporal. So you should make sure you focus on that. But go ahead, finish that. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That's what it's all about. Go ahead. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? See, we hear that. But do we really understand what he mean by that? We bicker about little small stuff, have problems about little stuff. Hey, hey, you mess around and lose your soul. Keep in mind what the whole goal is about. 
Because it's all, you know, this, this whole world, you got songs, you know, that always come out. It's me, myself, and I. That was a rap song, you know. Old school hip-hop heads know what I'm talking about, you know. Hey, you know, and they embedded that in the life. But that's a way of life now. It's about me. And that's totally opposite of how God got it. And you ain't here but for a moment anyway. Well, go ahead, brother. Where you at? 37. Go ahead. Or well, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Yeah, nothing. But we don't act like that all the time. We don't act like our souls are serious, right? We come in here, be lax. You know, we read. Oh, yeah, I read. Did you read this week? No, nah, man, I ain't get to it this week, man. Maybe next week. Did you read it last week? No, nah, man, I, mean, I ain't get to it. Your soul is on the line. It's serious. We don't, we don't look at this the right way all the time. I tell you, hey, everybody be Johnny on the spot, like I told the choir earlier today. You wouldn't, you would, we wouldn't miss a minute. You'd be early. You'd be ready. You'd be on point. You'd be reading every day if you had said, if you finish this Bible, the end of this Bible is a million dollars for you. I'm telling you, it would be a race. Be like, I just told you today. You'd be like, where you at? I'm, I'm a Revelation 20 right now. Well, Revelation 20, brother. I don't know about you. I'm there. But see, th but that just goes to show you, it's that serious, though. You put that money on there, people die on the spot. Be like, the shoot, boy, you read, how many times? You only read it twice, boy? I read it seven times, bro, complete. But we need to look at it like that. More than that. It's more important than that. So we got to make sure we get our minds in the right place. Go ahead and finish that last one. Whosoever, therefore, shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his, of his Father with the holy angels. So he letting you know that, hey, that's why we think like that. Because it's an adulterous and sinful generation. And our mind is corrupted in that. See, what happens is, as a little stuff goes on, you know, on and on, you know, and you start getting a little bit and a little bit of negativity before you get a whole bunch, you used to it. It's watered down. It get watered down. Look at television. Look at the old, uh, some of the old heads when they used to have, you know, you know, I love Lucy on. You know, they didn't even sleep in the same bed. But now look what's on TV now. What they call say, oh, brother, that ain't nothing but some soft porn. That's all. Hey, 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 listen, that's foolishness. But that just goes to show. And trust me, back then in the 50s, they would have been in the uproar. If they see what we see now, they probably have a heart attack. But like, what? Nah. But that just show you where we at right now. The, the, we've been conditioned. So we think, it, we think like that, and we shouldn't have that mindset. But then when you have a sinful generation, that's what happened, and that's why you think like that, and you have that particular mind like that. And we want to make sure that this book is what is this book here is to draw us back in, bring wholesome words to us and knowledge so that we don't fall back into the world. That's why Jesus, when he's talking to the disciples, he said, you are not of the world. So that way, when you ain't of the world, you shouldn't behave like the world. So I shouldn't see you acting like, you know, your brother or sister up the street. You know, you shouldn't behave in that manner. Y'all know what I'm talking about, how y'all see stuff. Y'all y'all walk by shaking your head. But, hey, that's, that's the way it is in this world. All right, let's move forward. Let's go to John 7. That's the typo. It should be 37 and 38. John 7, and pick it up at verse 37, 7 and 37. Go ahead, brother. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying. See, Jesus here, he crying. Hey, here, it is, here is God crying. He's crying for us. Keep in mind, he already know he got to be, be crucified and go all that, but look where his mind is at. His mind is on towards us. 
So he said, in that last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying what? If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. He said, out of his belly shall flow scripture of living water. So you get eternal life if you follow what's written in the book. And we're going to find out who this book is and who is it written of. Because even back then when he was saying this stuff, they didn't get it. Religious leaders, Pharisees, Sadducees, supposedly know the law. Scholars in this didn't understand it, didn't get it. Let's go to Amos chapter 11. I mean, Amos chapter 8, I'm sorry. Then we come to find out why. And this is the state that we're in right now in this world. 8 and 11. Amos 8 and 11. Go, hold, go ahead. Behold, the days come, said the Lord God. So now he, the Lord, this is God talking right here. Although we know who it really is, right? It's Amos speaking, but we know right. By prophecy of Peter, he, they spake by him, right? So we understand that. He said, behold, the days come, said God, that what? That I will send a famine in the land. See, we ain't, we, see, we, we, we would have thought something totally different if, if you was in traditional church. But we come to find out, like we read when he said, Lord, hey, he don't care. He give you a strong delusion, right? That's what it said, right? So he, te he telling you this, right? Because you start not wanting something. He said, behold, the day comes, said the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land. So people are like, yeah, the people's hungry. Nah, we're going to finish this. Go ahead. Not a famine of bread. So he said, no, it ain't about being, being hungry for bread. Go ahead. Nor thirst for so, water. So now, now you, it ain't about water, even though I'm going to drink some right now. It ain't about water. But what is it about, brother? Go ahead. But of hearing the words of the Lord. See, this is that God. But now we understand when we read, hey, if you don't want it, you don't want, you don't, you don't want it. He ain't there. It's like he told his 12 disciples. He told them. When many of them, when he said, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, and many of them would say, this is a hard saying. And they decide, they start walking away from him like, man, this brother talking about eating his flesh, blood. We're going to walk. I'm gone. I'm out of here. He looked at his disciples, looked back at them, said, y'all going to leave too? Because, hey, I got something to give you. If you don't want it, hey, go. Because he ain't, it ain't, it's not about you thinking about, you know, he, he, he got to have you. No, he don't. If you don't want it, you don't have to get it. You can walk out of here right now and never come back. That's your choice. And he ain't forcing nobody. It almost looked like he was pushing them away. Like, normally you see a bunch of people leave. You be like, oh, 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 where you, where you going, brother? What's wrong? Where you going? Nah. He ain't like that. He, he turned out that they was leaving. He was like, y'all, y'all, you about to go too, bro? You out? You out? You out? But they were smart. They was like, man, where we going to go? Which is, I hope, the God that we all smart like that too. And understand, hey, ain't nowhere else for us to go. Peter was like, hey, you got the keys to turn light. Where am I going to go? I don't have any other place to go to. So that's the mindset we want to have. He said, behold, the days come and say, God, that was in the family of the land, not for the family of bread, no thirst for water, but for the hearing the word of God. God just cut you off complete. Like, you don't want it, I'm not going to give it to you. I'm not forcing nothing on you. He'd be like, hey, I'll let, let you do you, dude. Go. Do your thing. Let's move forward. Let's go to Isaiah 29. We got the mindset that God owed us something. No. He love you and want you to be, he say, I love you and I want you, I want you to make it. But if you don't, I'll kill you. That's that gangster talk. <laughs> like Brother Light just said, you know it's gangster talk when he's talking about tying you to a millstone and, and throwing you down in the, in the ocean. He's like, man, that is gangster talk. <laughs> I 
Thugs on thug stuff, yeah. Boy, that's how much I love. You don't want it? All right, I got something for you. Isaiah 29, pick it up at verse 10, 29 and 10. Go ahead. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. See, we see why we believe in the Bible, because we can see this. He said, I'm going to put them to sleep. Your prophets, your seers, the rulers, they're going to be dumb. You know they dumb now, because you, you turn on the television tomorrow morning. See how much of that you see, see how dumb it is. I mean, they can't count to three. I mean, you don't get more dumb than that. You can get a, you can get a three, four-year-old and start counting like that. Can't count to seven. I'm talking to my brother. He's still trying to figure out the Sabbath day. So let me see, brother. Let me. So when did you say the Sabbath is? I'm like, dude, this don't make no sense, man. If you, you, if you can't count to seven, I don't know what to tell you. But, hey, if you love it like that, this is why. So, but then again, he said, for the Lord have poured out upon them the spirit of deep sleep. And I've closed, the pro have closed your eyes, the prophets and your rules, and the seers have become. That was the prophets. And they were prophesying. Hey, the seers, that's one of them, you know, prophets. They were prophets. He closed, I'm closing their eyes so they don't see nothing. But go ahead. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men delivered to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. Trust me, this, I was, I, when I was looking for the Lord, I was reading it, and it was like I was just reading words. Because I was just reading, I, I read from Genesis to Deuteronomy. Like, do you know what you read? Nope. I'm in Deuteronomy, though. <laughs> you know what I'm reading, but I'm there. But it, it is like that. Because... Hey, they didn't close, they closed their eyes. So you just read, you know, that's, that's, that shows you, you can read a lot of books in the world. This is more evidence. You can read a whole lot of books in your life, and you can understand, oh, man, that was a good book, good story, brother. Man, did you read that book? That was a good story. You start reading this, you can't explain nothing. Without being taught and getting that spirit on you, you read this, you can read, I don't care how many times you read. You're like, I don't really understand that. Ain't no books like that. You know what I'm saying? Lord say, I'm going to give you the book, but I'm going to make sure you don't even understand it. Now, until you get right, then you can get it and understand it. I show you how the spirit is. He makes sure it's there, but you can't touch it. So it's closed on him. Go ahead. What verse you at? 12. Go ahead. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. So we know that that's true to this day. Because you can read it yourself. You can let people read and say, yeah, can you read this passage for me, brother? You know, because you can do that sometimes when you're dealing with people that are supposed to know something or not. You let them read stuff because they always want to bounce stuff off of you. You let them read something. Can you, can you explain this? Can you explain this um, Isaiah 29 to me? They'd be like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? No, brother, I can't. Then, then you can start talking. But go ahead. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Yeah. And see, that's what happened right now. It's about, it's about pre They ain't telling you that if you don't get right, Lord going to curse you. They ain't telling you that. Everything's a blessing. Everything is good. Everything is going to be a better day. Everything is, when they're not showing you nothing, what, what it really is. And that's the problem because it could be far from that. He said, wherefore the Lord said, for as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do on me, but have removed their heart far from me, and the fear of men is taught by the precepts of men. Trust me, that is. Because they only want to come up with, if you, you know if you smoke, it's a sin. It's a sin. You know, you sin if you smoke and drink, it's a sin. Yeah, that's precepts of men. And God never said anything about that. But when you tell them, don't put, get that pork chop out their mouth, then it's a problem. But he, that he told you don't do. But hey, this is why. That's another reason why we believe. So let's move forward. Revelation 3.
you the arm, the Lord reveals stuff. This is that's what's so amazing about this book. Because people want to say, you know, some people people ask, but how you get all that knowledge? Well, obviously you study, but the Lord reveals it to you. The more, the more you read and study, the more He show you. I mean, it's just that simple. He opened it up. The more you want to know and the more you want to learn, the more you reject, the less you have. The more work you put in, yeah, he, hey, it's there. Because he said he's standing at the door. He's always knocking. I'm ready to give it to you. I want to give you what you want. I'm going to give you what you need. But you got to come get it. You got to open the door. If he ain't forced the door, we already found out. He told Simon, y'all, you out here? You, go, you up? You, you know, you going, you know. He, hey, yeah, that's, that's the God we deal with. So, but he's there to give it to you if you want it. Revelations chapter 3. And pick it up at verse 20. Go ahead. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him. And he with me. See, this is showing you example of what I was just saying. He's letting you know, hey, I'm here. So if you feel like you're lacking in something or you need some more clarification, on it, then you need to, you know, get into the book and study a little more, pray and ask the Lord. And he, he'll show. He say he's going to suck with you. So that means, hey, whatever you need, he there. I'm right there. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and I will suck. Notice he said, and you open the door, right? He didn't say, I'm going to bust down the door and make you do right now. He said, you got to open that door. So what is open up the door? Getting this book. Open up this book. Getting in and reading. Studying. Show yourself approved. Reading daily. That's, that's opening the door. So if you ain't open this book, you left Jesus outside. Because he the word, right? Go ahead, brother. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. So he said, hey, this is, this is the criteria. He did. He walked the walk, and we must walk our walk. Go ahead. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Hey, if you got a hear to, ear to hear to understand and do, praise God. Let's go further. But did you see the understanding on what you need as far as in to learn how to Navigate yourself and through the Bible so that you can become God and get knowledge. This is the path you need, you need to be on. But this is also the reason why we believe. We believe in it because we can show you through proof, which we're going to get to. Lord, when we get to it pretty quick. But, hey, it is what it is. And we're going to show you how, you know, with no uncertainty why we believe in God. If we haven't showed you enough already. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10 and read that one verse 7. Go ahead. Then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written to me. No, so it's written of Jesus. And he said, I come in the volume of the book. But we know he said he was knocking, right? So you need to open up this book because he's the word. And then he's going to suck with you. And that's how he is. Because, you know, he, people say, yeah, you got personal relationship. Yeah, I, you know, one Sunday morning you got those preachers talking about, man, look, you ain't did nothing, ain't seen nothing, don't know nothing. Trust me. You want to know that if you got the word of God, we can just read it right here. Because he said it's written of him, right? So all we got to do is go in there and read it. If you don't line up with this, then you're wrong. It's that simple. John 1. And you, you finish that? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Finish that. To do thy will, O God. Yes, sir. John 1. Because he's written in the book, right? St. John 1, one brother said, yeah, say St. John, because it ain't written in my book like that. St. John 1, because we don't know if it's 1 John or 2 John, but I say St. John. Okay, St. John 1. 
and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So we, we say in the beginning, most of us know who the Word is, but he said he was written in a book, right? Not only does he say he's written in a book, he says he's the Word, right? That's what this is. Go ahead. The same was in the beginning with God. Go ahead. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So he said without him, it's not anything made that was made. But we're talking about Christ, right? But go ahead. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So he's letting you know this is the way we walk. But we read that, right? Because if you want to get that life, you have to walk like Jesus walked, right? Get on that path. And the only way to get on that path is to read this book. So that's what he's showing you. Let's go to Psalms 119. Psalms 119, and we're going to pick it up at verse 103, 119 and 103. Go ahead. How sweet are their words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Yes, sir, because that's the word, right? right? Go ahead. Through my precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Yes, sir. And a light unto my path. So this is our path which we must go on to. This is why we believe that. He, hey, the word is a lamp. And it's a light unto our path. And we know what path we must take, right? Because this is the word we should, we should go to and what we need. Now let's go to Matthew 25. just heard that the word was a lamp, right? Let's go read about that lamp. And this is what it's talking about. You're about the foolish virgins and ain't take no oil. This is what this is about. Because that word represents that. Matthew 25, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. So the Lord's he giving you that. He's letting you give you an example of the kingdom of heaven. And what it's like. But watch what happened right here. Go ahead. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. See, notice you had to have lamps, right? You said he the lamp, that's the path of your feet, right? So he said right here, he said, and five of them were wise in verse 2. He said, first, first one, he said, then, then shall the kingdom of heaven be like unto ten birds which took their lamps. Because their lamp is the way you need to go. That's your guide, right? He said, and they went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five was foolish. Verse 3. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil, oil with them. So they got their lamps, but they ain't got no oil. So they're not prepared. Go ahead. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. See, this is why I stress so much that we need to take this thing serious. See, obviously, you can fall in that. Because everybody, everybody, we read this, mm, not me, nope, not me, uh-uh. But see, obviously, this is somebody, right? This is somebody that thought they had it. They was in the right spot, right? But they ain't had no oil in there. And guess what happened? Because, see, this thing here is a long journey. So you want to make sure you don't run out. Trust me, I was going to California. I was driving through that desert my first time, boy. Woo! You don't want to run out of gas in the desert. And trust me, run out with this oil for the kingdom of God is a lot worse. I'll take that desert any day. So he said, verse 4, he said, but the wives took oil in their vessels with, with their lamps. But go ahead. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. So now they need to go out, right? Because that lamp is a light. So they need to go out, and this is what happened. Go ahead. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, 
give, up, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. See, they didn't even take no oil, you know. So they, they, they say, hey, our oil's going out. Give us y'all. I mean, normally, you know, you, just, you know, some people would think, yeah, you should help them out. Hey, and this, you on your own. See, we can't save you, nobody. You can't save your mother, your son, your daughter, your cousin. You got you got enough just protecting yourself, keeping yourself in order. Right, right. So you got to make sure you have that right mindset. And, they, and this is what they said. Go ahead. But the wise answer is saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. See, they, they told him like that, that old commercial, no, my brother. <laughs> you got to go get your own. See, I can't prepare it. I'm reading. I'm doing what thus said the Lord. I'm, I'm ready. I don't know about you. But I tell you what you can do. You go ahead and go, go back to everybody. So now they got to go scrambling. Go ahead. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him hey, to the marriage. So he let you know, hey, those that was ready, they went in. But we understand that this is talking about the kingdom. They was ready. The other five wasn't. And we already know the Lord, like, he ain't even... Let me, he, ain't, he ain't doing like we do. Well, they'll they be here in a minute, man. Give him another five more minutes. They, give him another five more. No. That ain't happening. Read that again. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they, were, they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. He did what? The door was shut. He said, man, close that door, man. You ain't prepared the door closed. You can't sit up there and have excuses because, man, I, I've had to do had on a job all the time. You see what, you know, what happened was, you see, this was, no, nah, the door closed. It's a wrap. And this is your salvation that's on the line, and you not prepared. Now, if these bridegrooms, if it was a million dollars, them boys would have plenty of oil, wouldn't they? <laughs> but see, that just goes to show you the mindset that you have. You have to understand this thing is serious. And we don't take it serious like we should. But go ahead. What verse you at? 11. Go ahead. Afterward came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. So now they finally came back. They got some oil. They trimmed. They left. They got their path. They got to the door. He said, open. But we already read already. Jesus said what? He's standing at the door and what? Not. He never told you he was opening it up, did he? He ain't doing that. And what's going to happen here? Go ahead. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. He said, man, I don't even know you. I don't know you. Why? Because you wasn't doing what you were supposed to have been doing. That's the whole problem. He said, I don't know you. Not to mention, he said, he's standing at the door. I'm there knocking, man, but you're going to have to open it up. So he, he told them, man, go on, get away from my door. I don't even, I don't, matter of fact, I don't even know. I don't even know you. You know how people say, do I know you? No, I don't know you. He said, I know you not. But you thought you had it. You have to understand what's going on out here. Let's go to Acts chapter 17. This is how you get prepared. These brothers gonna, these brothers gonna show you how to get prepared, be prepared right here. You gotta take this stuff serious. And this is what the average Christians don't do. 17, Acts 17 and 1. Go ahead. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apoll Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was the synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. And three Sabbath days. Notice he said them. three Sabbath days. He didn't say three first days of the week. Right? He went, he said, as Paul, as his manner was, went in, because that's the custom of Jesus too, right? He went in on three Sabbath days and reasoned with them out of what? Out of the scriptures. Out of the scriptures. Notice he reasoned with them. So they obviously they had something to say back, and he reasoned with them, showing them what it is. Go ahead. 11, that was it? Not 11. Go ahead. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. And that they received the word with all readiness, readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So you look and see that, hey, they said, okay, 
you, you preaching something up there. Let me see what it, let me see if it lines up with here. That's how you don't get deceived. And this is another reason why you believe. Because you look and he said that, okay. That line up, all right. right, right. You that dude, okay. And, and this is how you get knowledge and understand. And it has to line up with the whole book. Because it's here a little, there a little. And it all is one. Let's go to John 5. So we need to search the scripture. That's very important. John 5. And pick it up at verse 39. John 5. 39. Go ahead. See what Jesus tells him. Go ahead. Search the scriptures. So he told him right off the bat, search the scriptures. Now, he's he dealing with these Pharisees and Sadducees right here. And he's telling them to go search the city because believe they didn't believe in him. They didn't believe in Christ at all. Didn't, didn't, they didn't think he was the Christ, none of that. So he's told them to do this. Search the scriptures for what? For in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. But we see that with the virgins, right? We just read, right? You know, they thought they had it. They weren't prepared. This is what happened. But how do you get prepared? He says, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. So obviously they think, I got it. I don't know about you, brother, but I got it. He said, he said, he said search the scriptures in them you think you have eternal life. And they that was testified, he said, hey, they the one you think you, think you got it. They testify of me. Go ahead. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye, shall, him, him ye will receive. Hey, that happens a lot of times. <laughs> hey, it's always, it's always the opposite thing. You know, I remember when I first came into the world, my wife, she ain't going to like this, but I'm going to tell it like it is. Hey, we, I was trying to find this building here. And I came in. It was on a Wednesday. We used to open up at that time on a Wednesday. I'm coming in. I'm trying to find there. And I, I end up, I'm looking because my mind ain't even right because I'm so used to tradition. I'm already polluted. So I went all the way over here to that church over there. And they had Wednesday night too. We was in there. They want to talk about nothing. They were talking, uh, the best knowledge you got out of that, it was like, where did Eve come from? Came from the rib. You're smart. That was, it, was, it, was, it was terrible. We left out of there. My wife was like, I like this place. <laughs> I, I, I was like, because I didn't see any brothers over there. I said, nah, it ain't it. We got to find the right place to go to. So then I ended up finding it. I was over here, brother was teaching. We got in there, and one of the brothers was tripping in the back because I was reading out an NIV version Bible. So the brother in the back was tripping like, throw, he, he was like, we, I'm reading out the book. He was like, throw your Bible in the garbage. That brother ain't even with us no more. <laughs> but that just goes to show you, once that happened, that was a, we was reading about Deuteronomy or who, was, who we was and all that. I was sucking all that up. I'm like, this is some knowledge. This is it. I had my head covered. He showed me in Corinthians, dude, you can't have your head covered. I had good. We get ready to leave. My wife was like, nah. Nope. This ain't it. I'm like, why? This is it. She was good over there. She was ready. But over here, she was like, uh-uh. Nah. I said, what's wrong? She grabbed the brother in the back. The brother told me to throw my Bible away. Nope. I'm like, he ain't even teaching. He nobody. But that just goes to show you that, hey, when you come in different, you know, it's, it's a different, they, they don't want to deal with it. And that's kind of how it be. So what verse you was at? 44. Go ahead. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another? And seek not the honor that cometh from God only. Because that's the mindset. And once you get used to that, that's the way your mind always run to. But, hey, we got to understand when it lines up with the scriptures, you got to be good with it. Can't go off of cliches of 
what you used to or what I have. No. Because the world is upside down. So we have to realize that once we start to see the reality of things, we got to take it for what it is. It's supposed to line up here. When I saw a line up here, I was running with it. It's a line up, hey, that's it. Took my hat off, too. My hair was messed up. So I was like, I don't even care, man. I'll take this hat off. I ain't supposed to be in here with it. No way. I ain't know nothing anyway, but, you know, I was charged up. But go ahead, brother. Finish that. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. Because, see, they said they believed in Moses. They would say, oh, yeah, we believe in Moses, but we don't really believe in you. But then again, they insert the scriptures. See, so that's the problem. And that happened all the time. People with the scripture, oh, hey, they don't take heed. But I'm in that story. Like, praise God, my wife, she, she, she came, you know. You know, she here now. She was reluctant then, but she here now. So praise God. But that's what happens, you know. So he said, do not think that I would accuse you to the father. There is one that accused you, even Moses, on whom you trust. For what? For had ye believed Moses, you would have believed me. So he letting you know, hey, if you believe Moses, you believe me. But we already know why, right? Because he the word, right? right? But go ahead. For he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my word? And that's just simple right there. Hey, if you ain't believing his writing, ain't no way you're going to believe his word if you don't believe that. Right? Let's go to Psalm 40. And we're going to see this. But these men spake by the Holy Ghost. This is David right here. We read Isaiah, Psalms 40. But they couldn't believe the words, right? He said, hey, if they, I, I, he said, I ain't, I ain't got nothing. If you if they ain't believe Moses writing and he wrote to me, hey, ain't nothing else I can do for you. There's nothing else I can say. That's why when you're dealing with people, and they want to learn something about the book, and they try to say that, and they be talking about how, what they know and all that. First thing you need to make sure is, do they believe in this? Because if they don't believe in this, then, hey, forget about it. We ain't got nothing, we ain't got nothing to talk about. Because even you see these Pharisees and Sadducees, they were supposed to believe in the law, right? And they ain't searched the scriptures, so they didn't even believe it. He's like, man, you ain't even believe Moses, right? Man, you ain't going to believe me. I ain't, I ain't got nothing else for you. Psalms 40. And verse 7. Read that one verse, brother. Go ahead. Then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. Here's David writing that. And we know who this is, right? We read it, right? We read it in the New Testament, but you got to hear it in. But then he said, hey, this is why he said, I'm written in this book. So if they not believe in this, hey, they ain't going to believe, ain't going to believe at all. That's really what it boils down to. Let's go to 1 Timothy, chapter 4. First Timothy chapter four. We're gonna read one verse there. First Timothy four. And read that thirteen. Go ahead. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. See, and that's what we all supposed to be doing. This is Paul talking to Timothy. But he said, Till I come, give attendance to reading exhortation and to doctrine. That's what we should be doing because this is what happened with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They ain't reading the book because the Lord said, tell you, hey, if you read, I'm going to come. I'm going to suck with you. I'm going to eat with you. I'm knocking. So you need to study. Show yourself approved. And this is what happened. But this is always part of why we believe because we didn't read this thing and said, whoa, man, this Bible tight. I can't even But Sometimes when you start to get some knowledge, you start to understand like, man, I don't even know Whoa, man, I, I couldn't even believe some of this stuff. But, hey, it lines up like that. Some of the stuff is scary, it lines up. But let's go for the second Timothy. For some reason, you know, we, <laughs> for some reason, there's always a problem, and people need to, need, to, need to get this. But we talked about it earlier about being able to accept stuff, you know. 
When you're wrong, you're wrong. Being able to be corrected, be corrected. But in this world, hey, you ain't never wrong. You know, they teach you, yeah, if somebody wrong, you just don't say nothing to them. Just, you know, let them go over there. And if people got the mindset, you do you over there and I'm over here and we good. Nah. Hey, we supposed to correct one another and be able to receive correction. But somehow they didn't twist this up between correction and judging and all that, which I got some definitions we're going to read. And that's just to trip you up from doing what you're supposed to do. So now when you hear it, People don't like it. They frown up. They get mad. But, hey, that's what it's all about. Because I tell you, if somebody's saying something negative about you, and if it comes out to be true, all that's doing is making you a better person and getting you into the kingdom. So you should accept it all. 2 Timothy 3. And pick it up at verse 16. 3 and 16. Go ahead, brother. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. So it comes, it's all from God for inspiration and for what? And it's profitable for doctrine. Okay, so this is doctrine. Go ahead. So, doc, so what things you do, right? Go ahead. For reproof. Proof. Right, so you, you prove it, right? You did the book, you don't just tell people to believe just to be believing. You have them, they, they proof, right? You give, give them proof. Go ahead. For correction. And for correction. So you can be corrected through the scriptures. The scriptures to teach you and correct you. Hey, you out of line. You out of order. Because, you know, the first thing when people tell you out of order, say, oh, you can't judge me. You cannot judge. That ain't got nothing to do with judging. They're two different. Correction and judgment is different. Go ahead. For instruction in righteousness. So you being instructed in righteousness. And keep in mind, when you're reading this book, hey, when you're learning this, this is about you doing right. This is about helping you. When somebody's supposed to be correcting you, it's supposed to be helping you. It ain't supposed to be vindictive, like, yeah, I'm right, I'm right. No, that's the wrong spirit. It's supposed to be trying to edify one another. No, brother, you were wrong, or sister, you was wrong. Let me show you how it's supposed to be. And that's how we all supposed, because we all supposed to be trying to help one another so that we can get where we ultimately need to be. So he said, all scripture is given to inspiration of God and is, pro is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction to righteousness. That what? That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So that's, that's what it is. But let's get into some, let's get, to, get this uh, Western Dictionary definitions out. It should be on, the, on one of the sheets you got. Because this is the, it's always a problem. You start to try to correct somebody with the word of God. They straight go to judgment. I say, oh, you, brother, you judging me? Sister, you judging me? This ain't about judgment. This ain't got nothing to do with that. It's about what's wrong according to God, not according to me. If I'm judging you on how I feel, then you got a point. You got a gripe. But if I'm judging you, telling you, you know, you know, correcting you, should I say on what the book say, then it ain't got nothing to do with me. I ain't, I ain't write the book. They act like you wrote the book when you quote them a scripture. Like, you judging me? Me? Where am I? How am I judged? I just read the book. Oh, yeah, I'm the author of this. So I just show you what people don't think when they just run off at the mouth saying anything. Obviously, they were smart. They would say, oh, yeah, you, you didn't write that book, but it is harsh towards me. You know, <laughs> hey, you accept it what it is. But let's, let's read some of this stuff here. Let's read correction first. Go ahead down at one. And just read, um, read that first one up to uh, B. Go ahead. The action or an, an instance of correcting, such as amendment, rectification, rebuke, punishment. So that's, that's, that's what it is. We're about rebuking, right? Which is showing you what the correct way to go, right? That's what correction is, showing you that. But now let's read judgment and see what that says because they tell you that. So you got to go to school with people, man, because they say anything. So you got to take them to school. You got to get de de definitions out because, you know, w once you start dealing with the Bible, everybody just get dumb. You know what I'm saying? Be like, I can't count to seven. I don't know, one, two, three. I don't know, bro. You just get you dumbed down. I mean, the spirit just turns. You just get the dumb spirit on you. You don't know what don't mean what and 
Right don't mean right. And with left, you say, say left. But left don't really mean left because, see, you could just go, what? I mean, you just get, they just get dumb. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. And you hate to talk to people like that and say those things. But, you know, you got to bring out stuff like this because these, these people just don't get it. So judgment, read that first one. Just read that first one on, on, on this one. Well, you can, you can read this uh, sentiment of judgment, too. Go ahead. A decision made by a court or tribunal regarding a case it has heard. So you ain't judging nobody because you ain't even in court. So you talking about you, you can't judge. That ain't it. This is about court. Go look that up first and come back to me so we can talk. That's the hardest thing to do is try to show somebody something they ain't never seen or read and understand. You can't get nowhere. They be trying to argue about This is the only book people argue about they ain't never read. I mean, like. I was talking to my brother. He ain't never read. Now, of course, he don't. When I first got into it, man, he was like trying to say stuff. I know he ain't even seen no book. Hey, bro, you ain't read no book. You, you forgot I am your brother, right? <laughs> you know I, I know. I've been there. But they still talk like they know. Like, yeah, they don't mean that. They mean. But now I got him beat him upside his head so much. Now he only say, he just say, yeah, what what that say again? <laughs> now he went from like he knows something. He didn't got dumb now. Now it's like. So when is the Sabbath again? What one, two, what day was it? They, now they turn from that to dumb. He was wise and now he's dumb. Right, I'm like, well, how did you go from knowing everything to be a dummy? I wish I could, could, could keep footage of all that when I talked to him. Like, but look at yourself then. You knew everything. <laughs> look, I know it all. Now you can't count the three. But that's the way it be. I just show you, I'll, I'll be wondering if that's the devil jumping in and out of people, you know, like. What the heck is going on? But that is what it is. So go ahead, finish that. The court will give its judgment on this case tomorrow so morning. So they're showing you the court. And finish the synonym judgment. Go ahead. Synonyms of judgment. Finding, holding, ruling, sentence. So you, you're like Spice, you can't judge. I ain't ruling over you. That ain't got nothing to do with that. So we can understand what the difference between the two. Because you can be rebuked and you can be correct. So if you're doing something wrong according to the Bible, you need to correct it. Take heed to it. And it ain't even personal because the person who's telling you that and teach you that haven't, haven't wrote nothing. So you ain't doing the will of him. You're doing the will of God. Let's go, let's go forward to Job. Job chapter 5. And we're going to read one verse there. And this is, should be your mindset on how it is and how you should feel about correction. This is Job. Job, so if anybody going to tell you something about correction, Job going to tell you something about that. Because he went through a whole lot. So you ought to listen to Job. 5 and 17. Go ahead, brother. Behold. Happy is the man whom God corrected. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. So he let you know, hey, you're supposed to be happy. And this is all part of why we believe in the Bible. Because trust me, if you've been around for a little while, you start to learn. Lord tell you don't do something. You start to find out like, whoa, 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 whoa. He ain't playing. No. Nah. He chastised you real quick. And he give you a little bit more. If you want to be a little stiff neck, it give you a little more. Oh, yeah, you want to keep playing? I got something for you. And we, can, we see how far the Lord go. You don't want to play with him. You don't want to take him all the way there. But he said, behold, happy is the man whom God corrected. Therefore, despise not the chasing of the Almighty. So if it happened to go like that, he say, don't get mad. And you don't know what brother or sister they sent to you to say certain things. Don't get mad at it. Just, hey, take a look in it. See if it's right. And if it is, correct yourself. And move forward. Let's go to Hebrews 12. Because we know what the ultimate goal is and what it's all about. Hebrews 12, 
pick it up at verse 6. Hebrews 12 and 6. Go ahead, brother. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son whom he receiveth. So that's love of God if he chasten you. So he said, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son he receives. So, hey, he correcting you, which is what you will want done so that you can get that. So, hey, Lord, if you need to correct me, go ahead. Because I need to make it. So that should be the mindset. But go ahead. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth, dealeth with you as with sons. So he letting you know, hey, if I'm, if I'm dealing with you and you didn't do something right, hey, I would, that's how you would do a son. Because that's how if you had children, that's what you did to your sons and daughters. So that's because you love them. He said, if you do a chasing, God dealeth with you as he deal with son for what? For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Exactly. Go ahead. For if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So he let you know, hey, if you be without chastisement, then you a bastard. If, if you if you just there and you ain't being chastised, that's what it is. So we should understand that. Go ahead. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which correcteth us, and we give them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they verily... For a few days chasing at us after their own pleasure. Yes, yeah, that happens to be sometimes, you know. But what your parents thought was right, they do that. But what? But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. So he got a gift to give you. So if he chastises you, hey, take it in with a grain of salt. Move forward. Because that's what it's all about. But this is always evidence to show us that, hey, we know that this is the true and living God. This is why we believe in it. But read that last verse. Go ahead. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. And that's and that's the truth. You know, hey, it was like, man, this ain't, I'm going through. Some people be like, I'm going through hell right now, brother. I'm going through hell. but And it, and it, and it happens. People go through a whole lot of stuff. But in the end, even in this life, even before you get to the end, you be going through a whole lot of stuff. You're struggling and stuff, going through. You know it always seemed to get better. So you got to hold on. He said, now no chasing for the present seems to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, at the words, it what? It yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. And, and that's what happens at the end. Because that's what our focus should be on. That's our mind. Say, hey, it's righteousness. We're we going to look at forward towards the end of this thing. And that's what our mind should be focused on. Let's go further. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, and we're going to read one verse there, Romans 2, because this is, this is another thing that always seems to trip us up. Go ahead, read that 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So it ain't just about hearing it, because you got some people that's out, that's in the Christian church, they, they can quote the Bible back and forth. I know a guy like that, but he ain't doing nothing. I'd be like, boy, you still got, you still eating that shrimp? Yeah, you know, brother, you know, it's hard, man, for my wife. She don't want, man, what about your wife? What about you? You up there slipping up. Yeah, man, I'm going I'm to try. I know it's right. Yeah, hey, and he knows, he knows some, he can quote some scriptures. But then he said, 13, he said, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law. So, hey, just because you heard it. You know it, can quote it, don't mean nothing if you don't do it. You wasting your time. You sitting there at the door with the oil, you done ran out. Because you ain't do nothing. And we know what happened to them. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Chapter 11. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 11 and 1. Go ahead. 
Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So he said, hey, I want to present you as a chaste virgin. Give me a spouse. He said, hey, I'm, I'm, I didn't, I'm presenting you there. But what? But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. See, he said it's a simple, right? People act like doing the commandments of God is so 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 hard, brother. It's hard to do. It's hard. Yes, it's, it's just a task you got to stay on. Hey, but you got to stay focused. And he's telling you right here that it's simplicity, right? Verse 4. For if he, he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, you might bear with him. So you, we already know that because you, you, you know what another gospel going to be tomorrow, right? Because you can look up, you can look up the Sabbath day, and it'll tell you is it from Friday night to Saturday evening, right? And then right underneath there, say, you know, but that was the Jew Sabbath, but this is the Christian Sabbath, the first day of the week. That's another doctrine, because that's not what's wrote in this book. But then that's another Jesus they dealing with, right? And I show you, hey, he said, verse 4, he said, For if you hear come and preach it, another Jesus whom we have not preached. But this is also prophecy to let you know why we believe in the Bible. Because we can go out and see that, hey, they got another doctrine out there. And there's another Jesus, right? Because they got the D Jesus that's born on December 25th, right? But then they got the fat white guy in the suit. I don't even know how they go together. Jesus' birthday, but you got a fat white guy in the red suit. Uh, I don't get it. Like, why would you need that guy on Jesus' birthday? But anyway, for he said, if you come preaching another Jesus whom you have not preached, or you received another spirit whom you not received, or another gospel, you might accept that you might well bear with it. Skip down to verse 13 and go ahead. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And we can see that. We got evidence of that right now. Go ahead. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So people think, you know, a lot of times before I got into the world, you think you just got to be talking about devils to be wrong. No, we didn't know. They, they coming in saying the doors of the church is open. Come. They dress like right. They, they got all these garments on. They look righteous. They speak soft. They sometimes make me mad. Yes, brother. Please receive me. I'm like, dude, brother, they just killing you softly. And they come, he said, no marvel for Satan himself coming to, into an angel of light. So they're coming like they righteous, but they wicked it all outdoors. 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose ends shall be according to their works. And their ends going to be according to their works. And trust me, they over there on those works, man, <laughs> they in trouble. But let's move forward. We're getting towards the end of this thing. Let's go to Luke. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Now we're going to deal with Jesus. He was he was he was out he was fasting. So we're going we're going to deal with that uh Luke chapter 4 and pick up at verse 1. 4 and 1. Go ahead. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he, di he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, The man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So he said, we read, you know, that, you know, we read in, in Corinthians about them transforming themselves, right? So we're going to get some insight right here on this. So and this is how you know who you're dealing with. So he said, it is, he said in verse 4, he said, Jesus said unto him, no, he's talking to the devil. He says, written, the man shall not live by bread alone, but every word proceeded out of, of God. Verse 5. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him, all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power 
will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. Notice he got that power. But go ahead. But he wanted to be evil, so he got it. Because the Lord ain't no respect to person, even on that side. But go ahead. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And what Jesus say? Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written. So he hit, he keep hitting him with the book. So that's just goes to show you why you believe, because he's dealing with the book. But notice they say this minister was his ministers would be like this, right? He said this is how they would be. So he said, For it is written what? For it is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. He said hey, that you should worship him, and him only should you serve. So he's letting you know that. Now, watch how Satan come about it, because he said hey, they, they kind of slick. Go ahead. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, Cast thyself down from hence. So he put him on the pillow. He said, cast yourself down. Because Jesus was hitting him with all these scriptures, right? But see, he, he going to try to twist the scriptures. But you got to be uh, mindful of this. This is what they do. Go ahead. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. So now he used to say, hey, all you can do is throw yourself down. And, you know, they gonna, it's written. That's, that's written too, right? Mm-hmm. Say, live by bread alone. It's also written this. If you fall, hey, that was just in case something, if something happened, you know, because you know, anything is, is, is free game. So if something happened, hey, they can take care and do that. But that wasn't for you to just go ahead and do it out of spite. But that's how they twist the scriptures up. And they do this all the time. That's when you say, hey, the Sabbath day is the Sabbath day. It's Saturday. You say, hey, you know, we do the first day. You know, you know, Lord, you know, Lord, change, you change that. I'm like, where you read that at? But that's how you twist it. Go ahead. And Jesus answering said unto him, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. So he's letting you know that, hey, they, he twisted. And they wasn't even about. And that's written in Deuteronomy. But it ain't talking, it ain't telling you to feel him to physically jump himself off just if something was to happen. But this is how the scripture get twisted. That's what happened with Adam and Eve. Eve was deceived. And what happened? She, hey, she, he told her, you're going to be God, told her some truth, and he told her a lie. She wasn't going to die. It was going to be like God, and she died, and we died, and we've been dying ever since. But that just goes to show you, hey, they give you a little truth and give you a little lie together. But then, hey, he say transform into it, so that's what they do. Let's go to Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46. Pick it up at verse 8, 46 and 8. Go ahead. Remember this and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. So he's telling them to remember something. No other gods be telling you this. Go ahead. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. So he let you know, I'm God, and there's nothing, none else. I'm God, and there's none like me doing what? Declaring the end from the beginning. So he said, I'm going to tell you about what's going to happen in the beginning. What God, what religion, what other are doing that? They're not doing any of that. They're not proving any of that. He said he's declaring the end from the beginning and what? And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. He said it ain't even done yet. You can go to Revelation. You can have yourself a ball in there. Coming to a theater near you. It ain't happened yet. Go ahead. Saying. My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. He's letting you know, hey, I'm going to do all my pleasure. Check his history. Check, check, you know, said check his, ra- his record. Check his record. It's going to happen. He's going to do what he's going to do. That's why we believe. We don't have no blind faith up in here. Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42, 
pick it up at verse 9. I'm going to give you some more reason why we believe. Isaiah 42 and 9. Go ahead, brother. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Yeah, go ahead. Show us. Show us. See, the Lord said, I'm gonna, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you something. But he said he declared the old from the beginning, right? Go ahead. Tell us something. Go ahead. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise from the end of the earth. That's why I'm glad we had the choir back, right? We had some singing, right? Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Ye that go, that go down to the sea and all that is therein, the isles, the inhabitants thereof, let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. The villages that Kadar doth inhabit, let the inhabitants of the rocks sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountain. Go ahead, brother. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man and shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. So this is the Lord. He's saying that when he come back, go ahead. I have long time holding my peace. Because a lot of people say, oh, man, the Lord been talking about He's been going on. Hey, he just he just giving you a chance to repent. That's what that grace is about. He said, I have long time hold my peace and what? I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. See, you don't know about this Jesus. That ain't that other Jesus that we're talking about. Go ahead. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs. And I will make the rivers islands. And I will dry up the pools. And I will bring the blind by the way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. Go ahead, brother. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed. They trust in the graven images that say to the molten images, ye are our gods. Yeah, they, they do that. People think that this disappear. I, that always baffled me. You see all them making calves and all those images and all that idolatry. And then you come up right now and you think idolatry don't exist no more. Like, because like, you, you're saying, well, I don't think the Christmas tree is the idolatry, brother. Then what you think it is? Where is the idolatry at? Tell me. Because you ain't claiming nothing to be idolatry, so I need to know. And trust me, if it ain't nothing new in the sun, obviously, this, if it went on then, it's going on now. So tell me, where, where is it at? Go ahead, brother. Hear ye deaf, and look ye blind, that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf is my messenger that I sent? Who is blind is he that is perfect, and blind is the Lord's servant? See, and if you got any knowledge and understand, it, we don't get no more blind than this. Who is blind than us? Nobody. But this goes to show you why we believe in the Bible, because we see in truth. He said... He said, hear ye deaf and look ye blind that ye may see. Who is blind as my servant, the deaf is my messenger that I sent. Who is blind that is perfect and blind as his servant. Go ahead. Seeing many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. So you open it, but you can't, you can't hear nothing, you can't see nothing. That's messed up. That's messed up to be blind and deaf. Go ahead. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. There are, they are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. So he said, they, these people, they, they dumb, they blind, they can't see, and they snared in holes. They hidden in prison houses. Go ahead. Therefore pray, and none delivereth, for a spoil and none saith restore. Go ahead, brother. Who among you will give ear to this? He said, who, who can hear this? Us as a whole, we can't hear none of this. Brother, I'm, 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 I'm just American, brother. I'm like, <laughs> this is crazy. I ain't no slave. I'm like, dude, I talked to my grandfather. He just passed a, a few years ago. He was 92. And I asked him about the last day, and he was like, man, I was a slave master's name. He even knew that. But you say you ain't no slave, and your last name is the slave master's owner. <laughs> but you ain't a slave. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. Come on, people, think. What verse you at? 23. Go ahead. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? So he letting you know, who, who going to give ear to this? Notice this is Isaiah, thousands of years ago, right? He's telling, he's talking about you. Who going to hear this? Who going to wake up and see what's going on? 
that you can just plainly see right in front of you. You see all the stuff that happened to us. Wake up. Go ahead. Who gave Jacob for a spoil in Israel to the robbers? He said, man, who did it? Go ahead. Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned. For what? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Hey, see, but since we didn't do that, that's why the state in the world is where it's at right now. Go ahead, finish that. Therefore he hath poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle, and it hath set him on fire round about, yet he knew not. That's, that's something. You blind, deaf, you on fire, you still don't even know. Lord whooping you, beating the heck out of you, and you don't even re recognize it. Go ahead. And it burned him, yet he laid it not and to heart. And he still don't lay it to heart. And I'm going to give you some help. Let's go to the chart. Let's go to the Wikipedia chart. Because this just goes to show you, and we can look at some stuff, some stats, and we can see some stuff like, hey, man, this, this stuff here, man, this, this is, you can go look this up yourself. Some people are like, I don't like Wikipedia. Go, 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 no matter what. Find whatever book you want about this and look at these facts and you will see, hey, it is what it is. This is being incarcerated like we read. But you on fire and you dumb, you don't know what's going on. And this is, this is what's happening. We're going to go ahead and read this. Go ahead and start to read the statistics and, and go from there. Statistics of incarcerated African American males. So he's going to show you something right here. Go ahead. Researchers have been analyzing statistics on the incarceration in the United States of African American males as to age, location, causes, and the impact on children. So they're letting you know what's going on. You can see the graph on the right. It's, it's crazy. You see the graph on the right, it don't even make any sense. But they're going to tell you that. And they write this, they how they write this, that they put it right in your face. But you can't see it, you know why? Because you're blind. You can't see or hear. So it don't matter. We could just do whatever we want to do to you, and you don't know nothing about it anyway. You can't even recognize what, what you're seeing. But then how you going to recognize? If I set you on fire and you don't even know, then hey, you just walk around like it's a beautiful day. You be out there dancing in the clubs. Why he devouring you behind the scenes? I was talking to a brother on the job. He was saying he was at his girlfriend, ex-girlfriend some years ago. He old brother. He was talking about what happened in the past about 15, 20 years ago. He said he just called the police on him and he had to go to jail. He said he didn't even touch the young lady. She lied. She touched him. But it just goes to show you. And they, she came to the court. They got to the court system in the court. She was like, I want to throw it out. The, the judge and the, and the cops was like, and he ain't never had a, a record at all. The judge and the, and the cops, they was like, no, nah, no, nah, she fit for her life. We're going to prosecute him. It's going on. She was like, I'm going to throw it out. I'm going to throw it out. They were like, no, nah. no, nah, she just fit for her life. Because he, he about 6'3", you know, big guy. You know, she, they were like, no, nah, she fit for her life. We, we got to proceed. The only thing he said saved him. He ain't say he ain't never had a, a record. He ain't never been, a, he never had handcuffs on him. The only thing he saved him, his mom had, he had a little money, got a good lawyer. But other than that, he said it wasn't for that, dude, he would have been done. They're going to grab them somebody. We need somebody in this prison so we can make this money because we got investors in this stuff. Hey, it's a business. They don't care whether it was true or not. They're going to say, hey, since you in here, that's how I go, too. They tell you, pick, you call for domestic. Somebody got to go. And they they ready. They say, hey, this is how we grab somebody. And they was going to snatch him up. But this is the state we in. Go ahead, finish that. Where you at? Approximately 12 to 13% of the American population is African American. 12 to 13%. Go ahead. But they make up 35% of jail inmates and 37% of prison inmates of the 2.2 million male inmates as of 2014. That's crazy. 2.2. Dude, we only make 13% and we 35% in the jail? 2.2 million. What's going on? But that's what's going on. But you you dumb and you don't know, so they they just they they got you going in like cattle. But they're gonna tell you something right here. You're gonna get mad when they finish this story. But go ahead, read on, brother. U.S. Department of Justice 2014. Census data for 2000 of the number and race of all individuals incarcerated in the United States revealed a wide racial disproportion of the incarcerated population in each state. They tell you too, man, it's just disproportion, boy. 
what we doing to you. But go ahead. The proportion of blacks in prison populations exceed the proportional the proportion among state residents in 20 states. Man, just go beyond that. Go ahead. It gets better than that. You think you've seen something yet? Go ahead, brother. According to, according to the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, African Americans constitute nearly 2.3 million of the total 6.8 million incarcerated population. Ridiculous. Go ahead. And have nearly six times the incarceration rate of whites. Now, look, he said you got six times the incarceration. You would think we some bad people, right? You would think, oh, man, this is a terrible thing. They just some people, they, they wicked. Although we are wicked. But we ain't this wicked. And they're going to tell you that. They're going to show you you ain't this wicked. Go ahead, brother. A 2013 study confirmed that black men were much more likely to be arrested and incarcerated than white men and that this disparity disappeared after accounting for self-reported viol violence and IQ. So he's letting you know that. And it was some more on this that didn't, that, didn't, that didn't come out, but he was showing you also on there, it said that to the point that, you can look this up yourself, he said to the point that, hey, talking about ratio of people doing crimes and all that, he said whites and blacks, they, they, they doing the same amount of crime. Matter of fact, whites doing more. If you read on more, they say that. They do more crime. But yet we more in jail. But that just goes to show you. Now let's get back to the book. Psalms 2. And you can see that chart on there, the disparity of it. That's crazy. And trust me, that was like 2013. You can know what it is right now. It ain't getting better for you. Trust me. Psalms 2. Pick it up at verse 1, 2 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine the vain thing? Because that's their thoughts. Go ahead. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, and the Lord shall have them in derision. So they act like their Lord don't exist. He said, I'm laughing at them. And he said, he's going to have them in derision. But yeah, you know the Lord said, he gives strong delusion. What you think is wrong today, and I didn't see it in here. People didn't talk lessons about something wrong. Today, tomorrow, they saying, no, nah, I believe in that. Go ahead. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Go ahead, brother. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. So he let you know. He said, hey, he said he going to set his hill on his holy mount. Because that's Lord desires to, is to dwell in Jerusalem and come back and set up his kingdom. So that's part of prophecy. And that's a part of the thing that he's going to do. But let's go here. Because he said he going to set it up. He going to set us up this decree. And he's going to do it on, on, on Zion because, hey, there's a problem over in Zion. But we're going to notice something right here because he's coming over to Zion to straighten it out. Let's go to Isaiah 34. People are like, well, why are you going over to Zion? Because, hey, he's king of king, lords of lords. But watch what's going on in Zion because he's coming to set, his, set the record straight. We all know who Zion belonged to, but the Lord's showing you something right here. Isaiah 34. And pick it up and read that one verse, 34 and 8. Go ahead. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of. So he of said he's come back, right? We read what he was going to come back, right? And he said for the controversy, he said he, gonna, he said day for the Lord's vengeance for, for Zion, right? But go ahead and what? And the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. So he's going to come back for recompense for the controversy of Zion. What is that saying? That it's conflict over there. That's just more history why we believe in the Bible, right? Because this was written, Isaiah wrote this, thousand years, and we still got controversy in Zion? That's just showing you proof right there. Still not settled over there because the Lord ain't came back yet. Who can tell you stuff like that from the beginning? And there's still conflict going on tomorrow. Only the real God can do that. Let's go read that last scripture. Zechariah 14. <coughs> Z 
Zechariah 14, and pick up at verse 1. 14 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. He said he's coming back from Zion, coming to Zion, right? So we know this is future stuff going on. Because we ain't seen none of this. And go ahead. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth in, into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Go ahead. And what's going to happen? And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. Okay, go ahead. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. Yeah, because it's going to be an earthquake, but you can read that. And his mouth, his mouth, he coming back because that's where he left. You read in chapter of Acts, he, he tell you he's he going to come back the same way. He left. But go ahead. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Az Azal. Yea, ye shall flee, like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night. See, you know you ain't never seen nothing like this happen before. So this is more showing you why we believe, but go ahead. But it shall come to pass that evening time it shall be light, and it shall be in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. Go ahead, and what's going to happen at the end? And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. And that's going to be the end of it. He's going he to take over this world and straighten out. And Israel, hey, we need it because we show sure having a hard time. But that's why I believe in the Bible. I thank y'all for y'all time. Okay. Uh, I got plenty of announcements. We're supposed to have a baptism uh, today. So I'm going to read a few scriptures on that before we totally close out completely. And we all know we got the Passover coming up, the Tomasos, and uh, I think it may have been one more other thing. I ain't got so much notes. Mm. And yeah, the, and the fast, and the monthly fast. What, what day was that on, you know? Thursday? Okay. Thursday at sundown? Okay. All right. Okay. If nothing else with that, we'll go ahead and have him read the Sabbath announcements. Our and prayer is that the Hold up, hold up. And I guess the ones who's supposed to be getting baptized, I guess you could go ahead at this point and get dressed. Get ready. Okay, go ahead. Our prayer is that the eyes of your understanding were enlightened by today's lesson. DVDs and CDs of our lessons are available. Please place your order in the offering box along with your donation and pick your CDs, DVDs up at the podium next Sabbath. Please tune in to Thy Kingdom Come television program, which airs at various locations. Please join us at our other study classes question and answer Bible study every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time via conference call line at 860-970-0010, ID 343-531-334. Also stream live via our website, thykingdomcome7.com. Children's class, ages 4 through 12 every Sabbath at 12 noon. Teen Forum Bible class, ages 13 through 19, every other Sabbath, Saturday at 5 p.m. If you feel you are ready to be baptized, please sign the baptismal list at the podium and or speak with Brother Oscar. Following is the dress code for our services. All clothing should be modest in appearance. Nothing tight-fitting, overly baggy, sagging, or revealing should be worn. Men are to remove all hats and all head coverings, no shorts, 
and women should wear a head covering such as a hat or scarf, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 through 7. If your young child becomes noisy during the lesson, distracting other members, please remove him or her to the TV monitor area in the rear of the class. Any tithes and or free will offerings should be put in the offering envelope and placed in the offering box near the podium. Pray for our strength as we pray for you. Until next Sabbath, peace. Peace. Yeah, it's a blessing. I stand before you guys. And um, I guess we could just roll on into these baptism uh, scriptures because, you know, this walk, you know, you got you to gotta, you gotta be renewed. And first and foremost, you be renewed in the mind. So that's what the, you know, baptism represent. And uh, coming out a new man and woman and walking with the Lord. So let's, let's go to some scriptures real quick that we can read. Let's go to Matthew 28. I know when I first got in, I came in, I was like, you know, one of the brothers was like, man, you need to get baptized. I was like, man, I was baptized already. He was like, no, nah, man. <laughs> no, nah, you get baptized. I'm like, man, I've, I've been baptized, man. But, you know, how, how, how we, you know, if you've been in tradition, they be baptizing people when they like two years old. Like, they, that, you, they don't even know what they got dipped. But what they call it, just been, they just got wet. You just went swimming. You know, because without having any knowledge of what it is that you're supposed to be doing and understand what it is you're doing, you just don't baptize. People just be baptized. I mean, we was working at uh, uh, Brothers Bowie Church, and, you know, it was some, it was some, some of the contractors that was there. It was like, you, you, you baptize you, your sons and you baptize? I said, nah, man. They don't have any knowledge. Why would you baptize? Well, we do how we do it. How we, we do it. We just baptize. I said, for what? What's the purpose of that? If they don't understand what it is they're doing, but anything you do, you need to know exactly what it is that you're doing. Other than that, you're just wasting time. So they ain't helping nobody. But let's open up at Matthew 28. Matthew 28. And pick it up at verse 18, because this is what Jesus said. Matthew 28 and 18. Go ahead. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So this is the Lord saying, All power is given unto him. And what did he tell us? He was talking, obviously, talking to his disciples. What did he tell them to do? Go ye therefore and teach all nations. First thing he told them to do first was what? Teach, teach all nations. That's first and foremost. You need to know it, exactly what you're doing. But somehow they missed this. He said, Go ye therefore and teach teach all nations after you've been taught because people like they ask the question all the time should i just go in and just get baptized no he said go ye therefore and teach all nations so you don't just walk in to get baptized you gotta know something first that was the first thing he said then do what baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost which we all know is one but this is the scripture they always read they, they be in here baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. No, we all know that that's under one banner, and we understand that. Go ahead. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So, and, and notice what he said. Teaching them to do what? Observe all things, which is what we was reading, right? You need to read. You got to observe all things that command. That means you got to do them, right? Then what? And lo, I am with you always. But he also told you before, hey, he come, he suck, right? right? I come to suck with you. I'm knocking at the door. I will suck. He said, if I'm with you. So he said, teaching them to deserve all things whatsoever I command you. And lo, I am with you always. People want to he with you always. Hey, we've been reading. We've been with him, right? Because we're reading this book. Because he's what? The word, right? Yeah. So we with him always. And what, even what? Even unto the end of the world. Amen. So he said, he, I'm with you always to the end of the world. Because, hey, this word, the scripture tell you, the word by forever, right? So it's always here. You know, you go back a hundred something years, hey, it was a whole new crop of people. This word was here. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 
1 Corinthians chapter 10 and pick it up at verse 1. 10 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye would, you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. So he's letting them know, hey, I'm, I don't want y'all to be ignorant. And it's talking about we know this is in the wilderness, right? right? And they passed through the sea. And what happened when they was under there? Go ahead. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the See, sea. See, that was part of the baptism. You know, but hey, you would know that if you only got half a Bible, which people walk around with. Go ahead. And did all eat that same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. So they drank of Christ, right? Which is what we walk and we read. But he said read, right? And, but see, that they, they follow the Lord, but they, we follow them too. Because a lot of people say, man, I wish I'd been doing these days. I wish I'd been doing it these days. Hey, we right here getting it. We right here reading it right now. We getting it. Let's go a little further. Let's go to Acts 19. No, I'm sorry. Go to Romans 6. Romans 6, and pick it up at verse 3, 6 and 3. Go ahead, brother. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. So he's letting you know when you get into to be baptized, you baptize unto his death. So that's letting you know it's symbolic here. Go ahead. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto, into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So you're not going to just do what you used to do. Now, once you go down, you come up, you, hey, you, you got a, you're a new person. You're not going to behave like you used to. You're going to follow the Lord because, you hey, that's the pathway he's showing you. This is the way to get to it. Go ahead. For we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. And that's what we want, right? We all want eternal life, right? So that's the whole mindset you want to have. So when you go down and you come up, hey, you can't do the stuff that you used to do because you got to transform your mind. It said the newness of life. Verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So he said that from this point on, you're not serving sin. You're not, you're not doing it because you know how you was before. You was flying out the sin. I know I was. You was running towards it. So you're not going to serve sin. Go ahead. For what? For he that is dead is freed from sin. Yeah, because that body is dead. That's symbolic. When you go down, hey, that's over from that. Go ahead. Well, that way, it's over for that way of thinking. Go ahead. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over, over him. Go ahead. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. See, once you go down, that's it. You know, you can't just keep sinning and do whatever you want to do. I just go back down there again. No, that's why he got right away from the sacrificial law that was added in. Because they just want to continue to do what they want to do. That ain't the way it's supposed to be. You go down there, you change your mind. That's it. He died once. That's it. Go ahead. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. So that's where your mindset is supposed to be. Once you go down in that water, at that point there, you're not living unto yourself. You're living unto God. He already, hey, that person is dead. The old you is dead. Hey, ain't no more of that. Now, that don't mean you ain't going to have them whole thoughts. But, hey, you know, hey, you ain't living for sin no more. So you're not going to do what you used to do. You're going to do things the right way. Let's go to Acts 19. Acts 19. And pick it up at verse 1, 19 and 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? 
So he asked the question. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost, which you believe? This is what they said. Go ahead. And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. So they said, we ain't even heard nothing about it. Go ahead. What did, he, what did he say? And he said unto them, unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. So they was like, hey, we was baptized with John, which, hey, John was right. You know, right? Just be teaching them the right way. But they didn't receive the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Why? Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Jesus Christ. Go ahead. When they heard this, they, they were heard about what Jesus Christ, right? Right. But go ahead. And then when they heard that, what happened? They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, what happened to him? The Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. So they let you know once he once they do, hey, they got baptized, they start doing. But then that's the same thing what we talked earlier about coming to the door, knocking and sucking with them, right? You start to get some knowledge of God, and you start to know. And this is what happened to them. That spirit was poured on them. We're going to read one place where hey, even in Moses' time, the spirit was poured on these brothers. Let's go to Numbers 11. This will be it. When Moses was out there. He was having a hard time dealing with the people. And the Lord was appointing some more brothers to help him out, you know, in the, in the, you know while he was out in the wilderness. You know, get things going because he felt like it was too much. But the Lord got a little angry with him because, hey, the Lord can deal with anything. And he know what he needs to do. But he helped him out. He got some other brothers. But you can see the spirit was poured out on them once they got it. 11 and 23. Numbers 11 and pick it up at 23. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, is the Lord's hand waxed short? Thou shalt see now whether my, my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. Go ahead. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. Because he was like he needed some help because, hey, Israel was driving them crazy, you know. You see, they made, this is Moses for real. Moses, you talk about somebody smoking a rock. He smoked the rock. But go ahead. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him. And took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. See, that he gave that same spirit, but go ahead. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. Go ahead. But there remained two of the men in the camp, and the name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other Medad. And the spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. So you see, the spirit was poured out on them. So when you coming in the baptism and newness of life, hey, the Lord start opening up your mind, and you start to, you start to read, and you start to learn, and you start to get, you know, get that spirit on you to deal with God. But that's it on the baptism. So I guess we could go ahead and get started on that. Our sister Mimi, we baptize you in the name of Jesus the Christ for remission of past sins. 
and that you may walk in newness of life, and that you may receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and that you may have an advocate and an intercessor with the Father. In Jesus' name. come together over here. Lay hands on them. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, Father of the Spirit is created in heaven and earth. We thank you, dear God, for blessing us and has given us strength. Now, Father God, we ask that you keep Sister Mevi, that her walk and her path be strong in the Lord. In Jesus' name, everybody say, Amen. 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 Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Praise the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. These things we pray in Jesus' name. The King of Kings, the, King of Kings. the Lord, of Lords, Lord of Lords, and the Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Amen. Appreciate that, brother. <laughs> I get it wrapped up. Praise God.